This is the base image I started with and I chose it for a reason. I love the mood and the atmosphere and the ferns in the foreground. The path in the middle didn't play in my composition. This image I used a number of layers to sculpt the light with different techniques and colour grading to get the depth of colour that I had in mind. Let's now see how I broke down the layers to create the final image. There is many ways to do colour grading through your workflow. One of the ones that I use is adding textures for colour grading. The next layer is where I've applied a texture, not so much for the textured look, but the colour. I'm going to turn this layer on and you can see it's now deepened the colour of the forest. The texture that I've used is called Sage and it's from my Autumn Tones collection. I'm going to come up and look at the blend mode. It's overlay, so I'm going to change that to normal and actually change that to 100% and there's the texture. And why I chose this texture, it's got that beautiful subtle green but it's also got depth of colour. And by applying blend modes and adjusting the opacity, you can get a lovely colour grade coming through your images. I'll get that back to the normal opacity and blend mode. The next layer is where I put the hero in, the young boy. I'm going to turn that layer on. AI generated and I love the detail and the quirkiness in this young lad. I've applied a neural filter to actually get it to harmonise or blend in with the background. As I was going through this image, I found it was hard to get the colour and depth of colour, particularly with green. I'm going to come down here and you can see here where I've applied a neural filter. I'll turn that layer off and on. Now that's the actual colour he was, but I felt it was too contrasty for that background. So this is where I applied a neural filter. To get that, I'm going to go filter, neural filter, and I choose harmonisation. Now I look at the image and I think that the young boy still has a lot of contrast to him. So this is where I start to play with different techniques to get some colour matching or blending. The next layer is where I've done a hue and saturation with a clipping mask. I'll turn that layer on and you can see now it's got very light in colours. Sometimes I experiment with different things just to see what it can do. Let's open up the properties of the hue and saturation and you can see that I've dialed down the saturation to minus 40. I'll turn the properties off. This is where now I get the colour that I'm wanting in the depth on the next layer. I'm going to turn that layer on so that you can see now how it's got the depth of colour. What I've done is used a technique where I let Photoshop do the work to come up with that colour. And the technique is to go to Filter, Blur and choose Average. And what it does is it lets... Photoshop calculate the average colours in this image and it then comes up with this colour. You can see that I've actually applied a clipping mask, but what I've also done is applied a mask to take that colour tone in off the element, the young boy. I'm going to click on the mask and I'm going to disable the mask and you can see now how dark he is, which is not what I wanted. So what I've done is I've done some brushwork or masking and you can see here in the mask where I've brushed off some of that colour tone just to give it a little bit more lightness. At this point now I'm stopping and looking at the image and going, what other elements can I add to this composite? And when I'm stuck I'll go to what I call my creative stash where I've got all of my elements that I've collected over the years. And sometimes I find inspiration by looking at, you know, the different elements, birds, crows, houses, anything that I've got in my creative stash. And the next two elements is where 
when I looked at it, I thought they will fit in with the image. I'm going to turn the next layer on and what I've done is added one of my favourite birds and I just got it sitting there on that orb. I've also done a neural filter to blend that bird in. If I turn that off, you can actually see how bright that bird is and it doesn't work with this image. The next layer is where I added another element. I'll turn that on and I added a cage. I'll just zoom in and you can have a look. I felt that it added something to the story. Again, it was going into the creative stash to find inspiration. I've done a levels clipping mask. I'll turn that layer on. And you can see now I've got group one. I'm going to collapse that group. And what I tend to do is when I've got a number of elements, I will actually select them and put them into a group. And how I do that is I select the layers. For example, I'm going to select the levels layer here, hold down my shift key, click on the next layer and the next layer and how many layers that I want to select to put into the group. Then I use the shortcut key, control G which then puts them all into a group. And housekeeping, you could name that group elements, but I've left it as group one. I'm going to collapse that. Now I'm going to continue on with the next layer. And this is where I've done some dodging and I've used a grey layer. I'm going to turn that layer on and off. What I've actually done is dabbed light through the image in the foreground. I'll turn that layer on and off and it just bounces the viewer's eye and it gives what I call depth in light and shade. I have a video on how I use the grey layer for dodging and burning and I'll put the link in the description so that you can see that technique. My next layer is a hue and saturation. I'm going to turn that layer on and what I've actually done is just softened the depth of colour and this is a technique that I'll use quite often. I'll open up the properties box and you can see that its saturation is minus three and the lightness is plus five. I'll close down the properties box. Now I look at the image and I think what else do I want to do with it and I started to look for the light in the image and to see where the light could bounce in different areas. I'm going to turn the next layer on and you'll see that there's some brushwork on the trunk of the tree. I'll turn that off and on. What I've done is I've actually used a blank layer with a brush and I've sampled some of the colour in the light. So for example, I'll get my brush tool, I'll hold down my Alt key and I'll sample the colour that I think will work on that tree. And what I've done is just brushed along that tree to add some light down that tree trunk. Now it's about adding the colour graining and seeing what I can do with this image. My next layer is where I apply a photo filter and I'll turn that layer on. And what it is, is I've added a photo filter in cyan. I'll open up the properties box and you can see the photo filter and it's cyan. And the reason that I've done that is sometimes I will add in that cyan colour to get a blue tone or an aqua colour coming through. The photo filter is up in your single adjustments depending on where you have your tools positioned, but there it is there. And I use that for different colour grading techniques. The next layer is where I've applied a levels. I'll turn that layer on and what I've actually done is used a levels mask and selected the boy to get the colour depth that I wanted. I'm going to disable the mask and you can see now that there's certainly a colour mismatch with the background and the element of the young boy. I'll turn that mask back on and I'll show the technique that I use to do this. 
What I've done is got my object selection tool just up here. I've then drawn a square big enough to select the element. It's now selected that element and I wasn't too fussy about the selection, but what I have done then is applied a levels and I've gone and clicked on the levels. And what that does is it puts that selection into a mask and that's where you can see that there. Now, what I've done is adjusted that selection in the mask. I'll open up the properties and what I've done is just moved generally my mid-tone slider to make it either darker or lighter, depending on what I want to do. And that's a technique that I'll use just as a quick go-to technique to adjust the tones or colours. The next layer is where I use another technique to brush in light. And what I've done is used a fog brush. I'm going to click on that layer and you can see that it's a blank layer. I'm going to turn that layer on and off. And you can see that I've brushed in some fog in on that left hand side. I'll turn that off and on. Let's have a look at the blend mode. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is at 72%. And I use that technique just to add a little bit of fog or some lighting coming through an image. I've stopped and looked at the image and thought, is there anything else that I could add to this composite, other elements? And sometimes I'll go into that creative stash, look for inspiration, and sometimes I go, no, I don't need to add anything, or other times I'll go, no, I can add a little small element, what I call a gem. I'm going to turn that layer on, and what I've done is added a little clock in the orb, and I felt it added to a story. I'm going to have a look at what I've done with the opacity on the clock and I've dropped it down to 67%. And the reason that I've done that is I didn't want it to be strong and dominant because you can see now the eye is drawn to that clock and I didn't want that. It's a little hidden gem that adds a story but it doesn't become the major part of the composition. The next layer is where I've added a photo filter to add warmth. I'm going to turn that layer on and off. I'll turn it back on and let's have a look at the properties. I've actually chosen a warming filter and the density at 28. I felt that it had a lot of coolness to it. I'll turn that layer off and you can see that cyan coming through. And so I will use a warming color to add balance to the color depth. I'll turn that layer on and now I'm getting those warm tones. The rest of the layers now is all about light and color grading. I've got all my elements in place. The next layer, I'll turn that on, is a levels. And what I've done is that same technique that I used before. I used the object selection, selected the boy, applied it at levels that put that selection into a mask. I'll turn that layer off and on. Now I feel he's starting to blend in with that background. What I've done with the levels is I've just moved the mid-tone slider a bit to the left to make it darker. The next layer is another levels and I've done that to do a little bit of disguise work. I'll turn that layer on and off and it's very subtle. I wanted to actually blend a little bit of this area down here to make it darker. The next is where I've done a stamp visible layer, and the reason is that I wanted to move what I called a distractor across that clock face. I'll turn that layer on, and you can see I've removed some of that chain, and I've used the removal tool. It's about the little details zooming up and zooming back to see what are you missing sometimes. Let's come back now and the next layer is a hue and saturation. I'll turn that layer on and you can see now I've actually dialed down or softened the hues and the saturation. I'll open up the properties box. Let's have a look. It's minus 15 and a plus 5 in the lightness. 
Again, this is how I get the depth in my colour or the softness of the colours in my imagery. Next, I'll turn this layer on. It's a stamp visible. And the reason I've done a stamp visible is I've used one of my tints or actions that's called a soft pop. And I'll turn that layer on and it just gives a little boost of contrast. And it's one that I do like. If you look at the mask in here, it's very much a luminosity mask. The next layer, I'll turn that on, is I've done some little bit of contrast brushwork in the foreground because I felt that it was a little bit too light and bright. And so I just used a brush and contrast to paint that in. The next layer is a hue and saturation. I've dialed that down. Let's turn that off. You can see there is those ferns with a lot of light and I've selected them and put it into a mask and now that just tones that foreground down. The next is a tint. It's called Instapop. It's a colour grading action that I have. It gives depth now. It really builds that deepness into that image. Another hue and saturation, I'll turn that on. This is again where I've dialed down the saturation to soften the colours. Stamp visible layer, but I'm going to play and experiment. And what I've done is used an action called tint, and it's just peachy. It's a gradient, and I will use a gradient or a gradient map as a finishing touch to some of my images. I'll turn that layer on and off. Now it just gives that balance to me of the light and the dark and I feel that he's the hero of the story standing there in the forest with the clock saying time is ticking and it's about creating an image that's fun, got a little bit of whimsy but it can have a subtle story in that background. I hope you got some takeaways from behind the scenes where I shared Photoshop techniques and the creative thought process. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Have fun being creative.